adore you. Just the one to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Can you say that one time together and you'll be gone? Come on, say. I love you, Jesus. Come on, say, I worship and adore you. Say, I worship and adore you. Come to your father, just one. Just one to tell you. Say, Lord, I love. Lord, I love you more than anything. One more time. Jesus. Come on, just the congregation. Come on, say, say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Somebody say, I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Wow. Just want to tell you. Here we go, Lord, I love. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, clap your hand if you love all that. Thank you. Come on, you can do better than that if you love power, God. Deserves to hear it so many times. Yes. He he deserves to hear it relentlessly, repeatedly. But he just he simply asks that we just say it from time to time. People get mad when we don't say it all the time. Out of all the times that he demonstrates his love and he says it first you know sometimes when people say it you don't say it right back they get mad you know in any type of relationships your cousins your spouse your children your siblings you know you know I love you. you ain't gonna say it back and so what has happened is sometimes now Audrey, now sometimes we just use it loosely because people have come come to expect it. And we just, it's a reflex. But every now and then we gotta just pause and, and in that moment just say, Lord, I, I love you. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I just want you to know that I love you not a little bit, but I love you more than anything. And I and I, I just want to tell you. I I, I just want to tell you. I didn't, you know, I didn't come and take up a lot of time and I and I ain't gonna preach long today, but but I, I just want to tell you that I love you more than Thank you 
for you are a great and gracious God. You're a loving Savior, God. A wonderful Master. God, we just pause even in this moment to just say, man, we love you, man. You know, sometimes we don't always show it. Sometimes we don't say it. But man, we, we just, we love you. And, and not a little bit, like for real, for real, more than anything. God, that we're in, we're in your house and this is, this is your time, God. So we ask that you would speak to us. It's not, it's not that we deserve to hear from you, but we need to hear from you. In fact, oh God, if you don't, if you don't speak, we don't know what we're going to do. Sometimes you're the only person that will speak to us. We upset everybody else. And you're the only person that can, that knows just what to say and when to say it and how to say it. You know how sensitive we can be sometimes. And you, you know when how to how to bring us out of our angry place and out of our depressed place and out of our sad place and out of our frustrated place, out of our confused place. God, you know just what to say in, in some of the most difficult times in our lives. And so and so even now when maybe it's good or maybe it's bad, but we open ourselves up to you that whatever you want to say we want to receive it. And, and we simply ask that you would get glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. In Daniel, in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3. Daniel, in Daniel chapter 3. It's... pray that you do know the story. And it's okay if you don't because I'm about to tell you the story. We're going to read it. and um, We're not going to read um, all of uh, you won't get all of it but you'll get the gist uh, of how Daniel shows up in, in this passage. And we're going to begin reading in verse 13. I'll be reading from the New International Version of NIV. But in your hearing you'll find words that are very, are very similar to these and I believe this will speak to everyone in the room, uh, even as we celebrate and address our men. It says, furious with rage, uh, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? He said, Now listen. He said, Now, now y'all relax. He said, Now, now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you're ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. Uh, but if you do not worship it, I will you. You will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God, what God, what God, then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, listen, King, um, I hear what you're saying. King Nebuchadnezzar, listen, we don't, we don't have to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Listen, you go on and do what you got to do. Come on. Yes, uh, right. Because if we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve, yes, sir. notice there was a capital G there, yes. right, right. Uh, is able to deliver us from it and he'll deliver us from your majesty's hand. I, I love it. It's almost like a bit of sarcasm. Uh, but 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 even if he does not, we just want you to know, your my majesty, God. that my we God. will not serve your gods nor or worship the, the image of gold you've set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. Isn't that amazing? And he ordered a furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, 
turbans and other clothes were bound, tied up in other words, and thrown into the fire. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire, now watch this, it didn't just, it didn't just get hot for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but it killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And those three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Oh, but verse 24, look what happens. It says, then the king, then, then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement <laughs> and asked his advice. Wait, 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 oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, not, not wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, he said, now, am I seeing things? He said, now, if I remember correctly, we just threw three in the first. He said, weren't there three times? He says, uh, he said, and they said, they replied, certainly, your majesty. You can count. You're smarter than a fifth grader. He said, well, look. He said, the problem is, he said, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Here's where it gets real good. Servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire and the satraps, prefects, governors, royal advisors crowded around and what happened? They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies. Nor was a hair of their head singed. Uh, their robes were not scorched and there was no smell of fire even on them. The cologne they went in there with they came out with what, 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 whatever, whatever oil they had put on before they went in. They had the same oil when they came out. Then King Nebuchadnezzar said, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. Oh, they trusted in him. Watch this. Listen carefully. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching now. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own. I'm almost done preaching. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are going to be cut into pieces. <laughs> that, that's violent, ain't he? If you say anything against the God, you're going to be cut into pieces and your houses turned into a pile of rubble for no other God can save in this way. I, we stopped there, but let me just throw verse 30 in there for good measure. I mean, it's the last verse. We write there. It says, then the king promoted. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me stop. He promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You may be seated. For just a few moments with this thought in mind, God's bro code. Come on now. Right. God's bro code. Uh, bro code. Bro code. Of course, when I talk about bro code, you understand uh, the familiar jargon that we, uh, the vernacular that we use in today's time where um, there is uh, almost a secret and unspoken language amongst brothers that uh, must just be understood. Yes, sir. Uh, bro code is language that, uh, that you got to know, that you learn 
through time and experience, uh, but it's not necessarily written down anywhere. Let me try it one more time. Bro code, bro code, bro code are a set of rules that that brothers understand that we we roll with that we abide by and they're not necessarily rules that you'll find written in fact uh the bro code is such that uh not everybody can understand the code only brothers are supposed to be able to understand some of the bro code y'all yeah. right. still ain't with me brothers I'm, I'm with you guys. Uh, i need to hear an amen or something amen amen, amen. So, amen. And, and, and so bro code is, bro code happens in moments where uh, it is necessary to communicate something uh, even without using words. Uh, sometimes it is uh, an understanding, sometimes it's not about communicating something, sometimes it's about understanding a scenario, understanding the times in which we live and the, and the times in which we're dwelling and you've got to understand what is expected of you even if it's unspoken yeah. bro code and, and and if you if you will if you come to our text i believe that god is sharing with us through shadrach meshach and abednego uh, some bro code uh, now of course again i said that everybody ought to live by these things but i'm talking to the brothers so i was calling it bro code All right. uh, because he's dealing with these three men and if you understand the time in which they're living, of course, Daniel is the book of Daniel, and Daniel uh, has been uh, has gone through. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was having a series of dreams, and uh, and he couldn't understand why he was having these dreams. He didn't know what they meant. He was trying to to figure out what was going on in his that he couldn't rest, and his sleep life was just thrown off because of these dreams. And so, and so he said, listen, I want you to go visit all of the wise men. Uh, he said, I want to find a wise man who can interpret my dreams. And of course, nobody in the land could do it. And so he had decided that he said, well, since nobody is wise enough to interpret my dreams, he said, just kill all the wise men then. He said, everybody who calls themselves a wise man, he said, I want them dead. And so they set out to start the killing the wise men. And they ran across Daniel, and Daniel said, wait a minute. He was wise enough to say, wait a minute. He said, well, what? tell me what the dream is. And King Nebuchadnezzar said, listen, I ain't telling nobody the dream. He said, if you're wise, you're going to tell me what my dream is. And not only are you going to have to tell me what my dream is, then you have to tell me what that dream means. Right. And this is why he was frustrated because those uh, others around him couldn't understand what he was trying to say. They said, well, if you, maybe if you tell us the dream, maybe then we can interpret the dream for you. He was saying, no, I'm not going to tell you. He said, you, gotta, you just got to know what it is. He said, and when you find out that you know what it is, then you tell me what it means. Wow. And so they were frustrated. And Daniel said, listen, just give me some time. He said, and he went to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and other wise men. He said, listen. He said, let's pray and let's ask God to give us some direction on this because we clearly we don't know. And God, in Broco, dropped some knowledge and insight on them. And so they went back to King Nebuchadnezzar, and Daniel went back, and he stood before the king, and he told him what his dream was. And then he told him what his dream meant. And, and even though this happens right here in chapter uh, in chapter two, where this where he kind of explains to him what the dream is, and he said, "Man, you're gonna you're gonna erect a great thing. It's gonna have a gold head. It's gonna be a silver chest. It's gonna have you know iron legs and you know feet made of clay and iron." He said, "It's gonna be an incredible feature set." But the problem is, uh, a piece is gonna come out of the mountain uh, and it's gonna hit the feet, and the whole thing is gonna come down. He said, in fact, it's going to crumble and it's going to blow away like chaff. That's how it's going to become nothing. It's going to fall so hard that it's going to become like chaff blowing in the wind. He said, he said, that's, he said, and, it, and he said, and if you look at it, he said, your kingdom. He said, it's going to be a great king. He said, it's going to come down. He said, each and the next king is not going to be as strong. He said, then it's going to be a great king. He said, but it's all coming down. And even though King Nebuchadnezzar heard the warnings. He still built the golden image. Right. And so what happens is in chapter 3, he builds and erects a golden image, not but a base of nine feet. The thing was huge. And here's what he says. He said, listen, 
He said, because I want everybody to worship the things that I am building. He said, listen, he said, I'm going to start the music. He said, and when the music starts to play, he said, I want everybody to bow down and worship me. And worship this golden image that I have erected. He said, that's going to be the plan. I want everybody to worship this golden image that I have erected. Watch this. Uh, let me give you my first point, and then I'll back into this thing. The first thing I want you to understand is if, he, the first bro code is, he got to say, if I don't change the atmosphere, don't let it change your attitude. Let, 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 me, let me back into it. it he says, if, if, I, if, if I don't change the atmosphere, don't let it change your attitude. And so here's what happened. He says, he's, so the music begins to play and everybody starts to bow down and starts to worship this golden image that has been erected. But of course, you know, like in good fashion, somebody sees Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and they are not doing what everybody else is doing. And so they come to the king and they say, King, what, what, didn't you decree? Didn't you make it a rule that once the music started playing that everybody uh, was supposed to start to worship this golden image that you played down? In other words, he said, he said, well, you got three brothers up here. He said, while everybody else is, is, is standing and erect, they, they kneeling. Let me try it again. He said, you got three that when the music is being played and the song is being sung, they are being defiant and they are over there taking a knee and they ain't doing what everybody else is supposed to be doing. Y'all don't catch this in just a minute. Yeah, 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 he, yeah, said, yeah. he said, I want you to understand, he said, that you have three. Watch this. These are three men who are in, who you have put in position. These, they're well paid. These are well taken care of. I mean, they're in your kingdom. They have what they have because you gave it to them, king. And you mean to tell me that you can, you can, you can pay them well and they can be where they are because you gave it to them? And when your music starts playing and when your song is sung that they don't bow down? He said, they're going to take a knee instead of standing and erect and salute. Yeah, y'all don't get that. And he said, no, wait a minute. He said, no. He said, absolutely. He said, who, who, is, who are these three men? He said, man, that ain't go right there. Right. And so he walks over and he says, listen. He, and he grabs Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he says, now y'all, he said, y'all on my team. He said, we all in the safety. Come on, y'all in the kingdom. Listen, y'all are part of my cabinet. I've, I've given you position. I've given you authority. I've given you responsibility. Yeah. You have what you have because I took care of you. Yeah. You have what you have because I blessed you and I gave it to you. So here's the deal. And he said, now, he says, now when you hear the music, he said, come on, don't trip now. Come on, don't, don't, don't act like that. Don't be like, now when you hear the music this time, I want you to do and fall in line like everybody else. Yeah. And they said, and they said, well, King, let me just tell you, let me save you some time. Yeah. Uh, we we refuse, uh, we refuse to to answer you this. He said, in fact, we don't even feel it necessary to justify our actions in front of you. He said, because I understand how you're gonna play the song and dance, and I know everybody else is gonna bow down. He said, but he said, but the reason why we can't do this because even as your song plays, he said, I hear the lyrics. He said, you talk about the home of the free and the land of the brave. Maybe that's not what he was talking about. He said, but if you just keep singing that same song. You discover that that song does not line up with who we are. So because of that, we ain't going to bow down, King. He said, in fact, the God we serve is able to rescue us and snatch us. But watch this, King. We need to tell you this, that even if he does not change our atmosphere, it will not change our attitudes. And so, and so they refused. They refused to bow down. They said, we, 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 this is not who we are, and we refuse to be a part of it in verse 19. I love verse 19 because the Bible says, it's amazing how quickly people who can't relate to you change on you. Wow. It's right there in the text. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. And he ordered the furnace to be turned up seven times out of it. it amazing how sometimes when people don't really understand you, but yet they're furious with you, they're angry with you, their attitude, their mindset, their mentality can change towards you, and you don't even know why they're mad. Right, right, right. In this case, they know. And his attitude changed. Watch this, because you know friends are friends when you can disagree and still be all right. Let me try one more time. Because, because what, 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 are, what are friends if you can't disagree? What are friends if you can't argue? Sometimes 
to still realize the friendship is more important than the disagreement. I'm, I'm simply saying, but, but they realized in this moment that they were hirelings. And that they that he had he did not really have love or respect them. They, he respected Daniel, but he did not respect them. And so because of that, his attitude changed towards them. The second broke code, I, I got three. The second thing was watch this is uh, when the heat is on, never let them see you sweat. That's broke code number two. Uh, uh, when, when the heat is on, uh, ne ne never let them never let them see you sweat. Oh, now, now he, here's what happened because the Bible says that when his attitude changed, look at what he did. The Bible says he turned the heat up seven times hotter than it normally would have been turned up. Oh, right. Yeah, of, of course, I could get into the number seven and I could get into what that means, but it, it's irrelevant. But the most significant thing is it was already going to kill him. Right, right. right. But what he wanted to do was he wanted to make a point that who he wanted to send a message that whoever does not bow down to this image that I have erected, whoever does not follow my instructions will surely die a horrible death. And watch this. This is what happens when the ego goes unchecked because even now he sent his strongest and his best soldiers and he tied them up and he was they were carrying and leading Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego up into the fiery furnace. But here's what happened. The Bible says that they fell in the furnace, but his men got killed. Well, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Because Paul, what happened is now the very thing, the very people, his that were his strength, they he lost them because of his ego. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And how many times have we suffered great loss because of our ego? Yeah. Brothers. How many times have we have we missed it? Because of our ego. We let our ego get in the way. We could have said, I'm sorry. We could have backed off. We could have done a different. We could have. We could have. We could have changed the atmosphere, but because of our ego, because our ego wasn't in check, we lost some people. But here's what's amazing. Oh, what would have happened? What would have happened had he just thought differently? What 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 would have happened had had he had he had a conversation with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Maybe maybe if he had if they had reasoned together, right. may, may, maybe he wouldn't have had to lose others in the process. Jesus. But what happens is when when the heat is on, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not let him let, let anybody see them sweat. They said, "King, turn it up. We don't care." But even if he doesn't. We just, I like the King James. Even if he doesn't come, he's still able. Yeah. And what the NRV says is even if he does not come, we just want you to know we still ain't going to bow down. Yeah. And what I love about that is, is that their faith in God was so strong that they wanted any and everybody to know that our God is able even if he doesn't pause right there. Because that's the kind of faith and trust that we've got to have in our God. The reason why sometimes we miss out on so much is because we think if he doesn't, he can't. Let me come and try it again. We think if he doesn't, he was mad at us. We think if he doesn't, we had something to do with it. No, God can do whatever God wants to do because God is sovereign. And even if he chooses not to do it for you or me, it doesn't mean that he could not do it. And you don't have to feel guilty as if God doesn't like you because he doesn't. Let me just help somebody because somebody right now, you're, you're wrestling right now and you feel like whatever it is that God didn't do for you, you feel like he didn't do it because he was mad at you. You feel like God was trying to punish you. Maybe I'm speaking for myself because I know that there were some things in my life that I felt like God didn't do it or he let these things ha these other things happen because he was mad at me. And I had carried guilt and shame in my life for so long because I didn't realize that God is not a God of vengeance. God doesn't, he's not vindictive. And, we, and because I lacked understanding, I carried guilt. 
Let me free you of guilt. Let me free you of guilt and shame. You don't have to feel like that because God doesn't do, he doesn't operate like we do. Last thing, can I be through? Uh, let me get out of the way. Uh, is last row code is uh, when you God says when you stand for me, I'll stand with you. Well, right. let me let me give me a few minutes to work it out. Yes, uh, um, verse twenty four. Um, he knew something incredible had just happened. Yes, sir. It, 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 because he, he the moment that he threw them in the middle that they fell in the next verse. He stood up in amazement. Wait, wait, wait. He called his governors, his satraps, his prefects. He, yeah, yeah. he called all the people around. He said, listen, he said, I, he said y'all, y'all know. Because let me tell you something. Sometimes oh, when your ego goes unchecked, you get paranoid. Well, well, say that. Sometimes unchecked and unbridled power can lead to paranoia. Yeah. Start leaving you not knowing who you can trust. Yeah. But 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 and so he said, come here, come here, come here, look at it. He says, I ain't the king is not going crazy, but affirm what I have said. Right. Did we not just throw three men in the fire? Right, right, right. Yes, your majesty. Yeah, yes, you, you you're not crazy. Yes. We we threw three men in. He said, three with three. He says, Well, look. He said, and if I'm not crazy, he says, Look. Yeah. Oh, he said this. There's four men in there. He said, the problem is they're walking around unbound and free. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get a box. Right. Get a box. Yeah. What was supposed to happen to them didn't happen. I set them up for failure. I set them up to die. I set them up to lose. And I wanted to make a point in front of everybody. And now, even though I did my best to set them up to lose. Look at them walking around free. Yeah. 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 Speak Holy Spirit. My God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you know what's even more amazing, Jan, is that they didn't get free until they got in the fire. Well, yeah. Yeah. Amazing they were, but here's the thing. Uh, then the tea kettle leaned over and said, Lisa, but ain't neither one of y'all gonna be any good until you get into some hot water. Come in, church. Because you want to know what will bring out your best flavor? Do you want to know what brings out your best prayers? Do you want to know what make you sing that will make you sing your best song? It is not until you get into some hot water that you begin to understand the grace of God. Because outside of the water, you have a different perspective. But once you get in that thing, once some heat gets on you, what's in you is going to come out. And that's why we every Christian is no good until you get in some hot water. Until you get into some trouble. That's why when I need prayer, I don't, I don't call anybody who ain't been through that ain't saying nothing. But I don't call somebody who's been a great life. I got to call somebody who's been through a thing or two. Who knows about being in some trouble and getting out of some trouble. Because that person can pray me through whatever it is I'm going through. That are meant to burn you will bless you. Sometimes you can't get set free until you get it in some fire. I know what it's like to come to church and feel bound. And then the Holy Spirit can get a hold of me in that situation. And I can be as free as I want to be because I stop caring who's around me. I stop caring who's looking at me. I stop caring what people think. And I go ahead and just open up my mouth and I begin to give God praise and I begin to celebrate God. I know it ain't. I know it ain't always masculine. Sometimes it's not always masculine looking to fall on the floor. I know it's always masculine to dance. But let me tell you something. I stopped caring a long time.
time ago when anybody thought about me because I meant it when I said, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you more than the looks I might get. I love you more than the eyes that may roll. And so in fact, if you don't want to get, if you don't want to be around me, scoot over some because I feel a praise coming on right now. I wish I had somebody because right now I'm having a flashback to some times when I've been in trouble and nobody but God was able to rescue me. And if it had not been, but for the Lord that helped me, who was on my side, Lord knows, I don't know where I'd be. tried to kill them, Come on. had to shout them out. The same one who killed them had to shout them out. I mean, literally and metaphorically. Literally, he came to the hands. He said, Shadrach! Right there, verse 26. Sh Shadrach! Meshach! And about to go! Come out of there! Come in! But, but not only did he shout them out, literally, uh, verse 26, stay there. Right verse 26. He says, come out. He says, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. But look what happens next. The next verse. And the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. And they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies. <sighs> no was a hair on their hair since their robes were not scorched. And there was no smell of fire on them. And look what happens next. Then King Nebuchadnezzar said, he had to keep shouting now. Uh, I know he's shouting because of the, of the punctuation. Uh, Praise be to the God of Shadrach. Come on here, church. He said, Praise be to the God of Meshach. Praise be to the God of Abednego, who sent his angel and rescued his servants. You, you, you know, God is still standing with them because they did not look like what they had been through. I wish I had somebody. Is there anybody here who knows that God is a keeper? And God will bring you through some things and he'll bring you out on the other side. And you don't have to look like what you have been through when you come out on the other side. Look at what he says. He says when they came out, he said their clothes were still nice. He said when they looked at their hair was still intact. He said when they looked at them, they still smell good. Let me tell you something, church. Do you know that God is a keeper and he will keep you? in perfect peace sometimes you just got to trust him to fight your battles for you but if you trust and never doubt he will shine out bring you out Jesus. Uh, Jesus. he's a keeper of those Jesus. who will diligently seek him yes, verse 28 29 lastly you know you're still standing with God when, when you do the standing and God does the elevating. What? Good. All, all they did was do what God said do. That's it. That's it. All they did was, was trust him, not just when it was easy to trust him. Come on. Because see, when they when Daniel came and Daniel interpreted the dream. And Daniel, he said, listen, when, when Daniel got elevated, he promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. He's like, look, I want my boys around me. I want some wise men around me. I want some people who make good decisions around me. And we know that Daniel uh, is just like them. They get it from Daniel. He wanted some brothers around him who, had, who carried his DNA. Because let me tell you something. Uh, when you're in a circle, they better have your DNA. Come on, girl. You're right about it. Let, 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 let me tell you something. You, you, you better surround yourself. I'm telling everybody now. You better surround yourself with people who have your DNA. You better surround yourself with people who value the same things that you value, who live and love the same way that you live and love. Now, I'm not telling you to be a uniform. What I'm telling you is that there is power and strength in people because there are times when you may be weak, but 
your inner circle ought to be able to give you the same strength that you're accustomed to having. Because what happens is if your inner circle gives you a different kind of strength, sometimes they'll make you start thinking crazy. That's why you got to get crazy people from around you. I ain't telling you don't love and don't hang out with crazy people sometimes because everybody got some crazy people that you love and that you hang around. But sometimes you can't let them be the only people you hang around because all you hang around is crazy people. Well, like I said, the DNA is right there. But I want to tell you, sometimes you've got to have some people with some sense who know how to pray you through, who know how to read scripture to you, who know how to minister to you, who ain't always going to be, girl, you better go on and fight them. Girl, I wouldn't take that, man. You better not let nobody talk to you like that. You better man up. And you you got to have, quit having people around you who talk crazy. And so he had some people around him who shared his DNA. And so what happens is now, what that happens is we know that Daniel's going to stand because he's going to end up in the lion's den, of course, and because God's going to meet him in the lion's den, of course. And, but just watch what happens right here. They stood, and they took a stand for Jesus Christ, and they said, listen, Yahweh, in this, in this case, Yahweh God, he's our God, and we believe in him. And what ends up happening is because they took a stand, even in the face of what was not popular, the whole nation well, ended up knowing who God was. Well, yeah. wow. King well. Nebuchadnezzar said, listen. He said, look, look what he says. He, says I, he said, therefore I decree yeah. that all the people of any nation and language they could have died quietly in a, in a furnace. Right. Uh -huh. And nobody would have been the wiser. But because they refused yes. to be a part of status quo, oh, yes. and they decided to take us instead to take a stand and to do what was right, and they knew what was right in the sight of God, now, yes. the nation, yes. 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 people of every language, yes. every nation or language, watch this, who say anything right. yeah. <laughs> under your breath, yeah. Yeah. murmur, mumble. Who say anything Come on. against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Yeah. Oh, you're going to get cut up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we say all the time, I'll cut you behind this verse. We, this is what they said. They said, oh, oh, we gonna, oh you're going to get cut behind this. <laughs> Literally. Right, yeah. right. And your house is going to be leveled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on, they call it spirit. Come on. Your, your, your house will be torn to rubble. It will be torn to nothing. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because they took a stand. Yeah. Because yeah. they took a stand. Because they refused. They refused to bow down and be like everybody else. Yeah. Church. Church. We're not called to be like everybody else. Come on, Holy Spirit. Talk about it. Talk about it. I, I, I mean, I wish I wish I was hooping right now, and I wish I was closing. But uh, you feeding the sheep, man. You feeding the sheep, man. Listen, listen, listen. We need to know. Listen, young people, y'all need to know this. That when you take a stand at school, listen, it ain't popular. Everybody else may be bowing down, like, cause they, this on, is what people do. Right. People, people don't notice everybody who just fits in with everybody else. Come on! But the moment that you decide to be different, yeah, yeah. the moment you decide to have morals and have values, watch this, it's going to be unpopular. That's right. right. If you ain't doing what everybody else do, why, why you don't do this? Sometimes you got to learn to say, because the God I serve. Well, yeah. well. Well, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna keep no boy if you don't do this, or you ain't gonna get no girl if you don't do this. You know what? The God I serve, Come on. Yeah. he's able to do it. And if, and if he don't, guess what? I, then that's their loss. Amen. Right. See, see that, that we're called to be different. Yeah. And God says, "Cause you stand." He's out of the elevator. Yeah. The king promoted them. When you stand firm and you watch and you do what God has instructed you to do, you watch how God will promote you. Yeah. You gotta go through some tribulation. Yeah. Yeah. Some tribulation, turbulence. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Tribulation is a new word. 
It's tribulation and turbulence put together. It's turbulation. It's much worse. It's much worse than just tribulation and turbulence. It's turbulation. It's terrible. It's like hell. supposed to do. God does the elevating. They were, they were already men who sat high. They had, they had high positions. They were men of authority, men of influence. They were well paid. They were, they were part of King Nebuchadnezzar's cabinet. They were, they, were, they were decision makers. But because they were high and they, they did not allow their desire to keep what they had. They didn't care about their reputation. They didn't care what people was going to say about them. They didn't want to sell out and do what they need to do just to keep their job or to keep their money or to keep their position or to keep their influence. They said, listen, you can have all this influence back if you want it. Come on. Listen, you can have this job back and this job didn't make me and it ain't going to break me. Yeah. I have standards. I am who I am. And because they did, guess what happened? They got promoted even higher. If they had just bowed down, they would have stayed right where they were. Nobody would have ever noticed them. In fact, they would have lost respect because other people who, who would look to them as believers and as leaders would say, man, they selling out too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they still got the power. They still got the power, but, but they don't have my respect. And what happens is because they took a stand, You know what? You want to know what your next level is? It's in your obedience. It's in your obedience. It's in your stand. It's in your willingness to make nothing of your reputation. Oh, I'm learning this. I've, I've known it, but I'm learning it all over again. S stop caring about what people think. I said it respectfully. I mean, I ain't telling you just, you don't care what nobody thinks. I'm my old bro. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, and sometimes in your personal decisions that you sometimes have to make for yourself, for the betterment of yourself, for the glory of God, sometimes you cannot consider everybody around you. Sometimes you have to make a decision because you just know it's the right thing for you to do with God. And if you're here and you listen, you've been wrestling with that, you've been struggling with that. You've been struggling with making decisions and, and taking a stand and letting your reputation become of nothing and letting your identity be found in Jesus Christ. Maybe I, I get it because that's it's tough in this day and in this age. It's hard to take a stand and to live right and to love right and to be right and to do right, you know, in the presence and in the sight of God and witnesses. It, it's tough because there's always a Nebuchadnezzar around the corner waiting to say, wait a minute, you know, you, you mean to tell me you ain't going to do this? Wait a minute, you mean to tell me you ain't going to do that? Wait a minute, you mean to tell me you ain't going to do this? Always a King, a King Nebuchadnezzar around the corner waiting to remind you of how easy it should be or how easy it could be for you if you just sold out, if you just do it like everybody else, if you just fall in line, you know, you'll just, you, it'll be, a life will be easier for you. Just just go ahead and say it. Just, just do it. Just, just don't do it. Just whatever it is. Just lower who you are for the sake of somebody else. But that's not what God has called us to do, yeah. church. That's not what He's called faith to do. Yeah. And I, and I, I've been questioning myself as a pastor, as a leader. Have, he, he 
He has never left me. He has never failed me. He has never let me down. In fact, any time that I've just trusted him, the only thing he's ever done, I'm telling you, it's hard to get that mentality because there's always so many reminders. Now, all you got to do is do this. All you got to do is just, just do this. But to stay and keep your hand on the plow and to keep reading and studying and preaching Jesus and him crucified and to keep. I don't know if, I, if I'm honest, can I, can I have an honest preacher moment right here? It's just us, right? It's just us. Anybody who's online, don't y'all listen to this. Listen. But sometimes when you look around and you see other people, how they're bursting with growth. And I know, see, and I, I, if I'm honest, I, people tell us all the time how blessed we are to be, you know, y'all are a year and a half, y'all are 19 months old and doing what y'all have done in the community, and man, you doing this stuff, and I see people who are one years old with 3,000, and in my head, I'm like, now Lord, I know you can trust me. Like, like, I, like I'm not moved by certain things, I'm like, you know, I'm not moved, you know, by a lot of stuff. You know, I mean, I like stuff, I want stuff, but I'm not moved by it. It doesn't change it. I've had stuff. I, I mean, I, I, I got stuff. I'm not moved by that. But God, I always just want to just do your will. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're wrestling like I have wrestled, like your pastor has wrestled, and just a moment we're going to stand. Listen, I want to pray for you. I want to cover you. Because I know where you are. And I promise I do. The first call I'm asking for is for salvation. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I mean, you don't know him as your Lord and as your Savior. Listen, that's the first call. Listen, don't leave here the same way that you came. You don't have to leave without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen. Having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ does not in any way obligate you to this church. All right? It's just about a personal relationship with God. And we want to take you through that process. Listen, I'm not going to put this mic in your hand. I'm not even going to do it right here in front of everybody. We want to take you out and minister to you privately. But if by chance you don't have a personal relationship with Christ, don't leave here without it. Now, maybe you say, I, I, maybe you don't, but maybe you do have a personal relationship with Christ. But you don't have a church on. Listen, I'd love to be your pastor. We'd love to be your church. We're a growing church. And this service, this is our first service. It, it has grown our second service a little larger than this service. But it, it, we're growing and, and God is blessing and he's moving us. But listen, you want to be a part of a growing, thriving, life-giving church? I'd love to be your pastor. We'd love to be a part of your growth. Let's grow together.
wrestle and you want to win this fight, maybe you got it, you got it, cool. But I'm opening the altar now.
God that you are blessed in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, in the words of David, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. God, let us do it with the spirit of excellence. God, strengthen us in our hearts, strengthen us in our minds. God, help us to in our routines, oh God, to rest our minds, to rest our bodies. God, so that ultimately you always get the glory of what's going on in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And thank you.